Good morning, Boker Tov, everyone. Thank you, Raya and Mordechai, for hosting this wonderful class. Bezrat Hashem, buckle up. This is going to be something really, really special. Firstly, I would like to mention, before we start, um, that, uh, unfor- that we want to dedicate this class in memory of a very special man. He was the head shaliach in, in, in Italy. The, one of the first five shluchim that the Rebbe sent out in 1958. Rabbi Gershon Mendel Gorelik of blessed memory. I had the great zuchut, the great honor, honor and merit of knowing him and being with him uh, when I was uh, 14 years old in, in Milano. We had a special program and, uh, for about a month. And um, unfortunately, he passed away on Shabbos. He was brought to Israel. They, they landed this morning. And right after the class, I'm going to be participating in the funeral for this great tzaddik, Rabbi Gershon Mendel Gorelik. And so may this class be a special uh, blessing for his neshama and comfort for the family. Over the past couple of days, we've been discussing a very important verse in Pera Kuf Yutet. This is verse number Nundalid, number 54. And David HaMelech, says as follows, Zmirot hayuli chukecha, your statutes, your mitzvot, are for me as a song. Beveit migurai, in my living place, or in the place that I've been uh, afraid. We've talked about different interpretations into this verse, and today we're going to learn something super special. And the reason is because one of, the, one of the great reasons why I love the teachings of Hasidut so much is because in every scenario, in every situation, the Rebbe's, our Rebbe, Hasidut in general, always finds something good in every situation. So even when the Talmud of course, all due respect to the Talmud, um, says that David HaMelech was punished for referring to the Torah, to the mitzvot, as being a zemer, to be a song, and actually with a very severe punishment, as we learned a few, day, a few days ago, that the, if they forgot that the Arona Kodesh, the Holy Ark, is not supposed to be placed on a wagon, it's supposed to be placed on the shoulders, as actually in yesterday's, in the Chumash, in the Chitat of Sunday, um, we learned about the poles on the Arona Kodesh, and the video that we're going to have for this, uh, for, for this uh, before Shabbos this week, there's a tr- an amazing message over there about the polls for the Arona Kodesh. But we're not going to go there now. We're going to try to stick to the subject of David Amel. And so through the lenses of Hasidut, there's always something special. And so firstly, I want to talk about how we can learn something good from this Pasuk. And then we're going to connect it to Chodesh Adar, the month of Adar. So when, if the Torah, Tehillim is part of the Torah, and if the Torah has in it, Zmiro Tayuli Chukecha Bebet Megurai, that the Chukecha, Hashem's Torah and Hashem's Mitzvot, are considered a song, are considered a hymn, then there must be something that we can learn from that. In other words, that it's also something positive. So on one hand, we learned at great length yesterday that David HaMelech is talking about chukecha, your statutes. And these are the mitzvahs which have no reason or rhyme that we know. Of course, they have one, but much deeper than anything that we can ever imagine. So we're talking about learning the Torah, observing the mitzvot, even if we don't understand the depth, because we are connecting to Hashem 
And Hashem himself is much higher than any type of explanation or any type of reason. On the other hand, from the fact that David HaMelech calls it Zmirot Hayilichikecha, that your statutes are a song, there must be a possibility for us to observe the, the Torah and mitzvot with feeling, with heart, with all our neshama. So, true that we're talking about mitzvahs that we, we don't know their reason per se. But on the other hand, on the other hand, we're talking over here about thanking Hashem for the fact that we're able to observe the mitzvot even though we don't understand. So the feeling, the understanding is not a feeling of, 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 of appreciation. Rather, it's a feeling and an appreciation of the fact that we can observe the mitzvot even though we don't understand them. That's called lishma. In one of the earlier courses that we learned in the morning, it was during the summer, as we got closer to Chodesh Elul, we learned about the subject of Eved Pashut, a simple servant. There's a line that, I don't know if it's attributed to the Baal Shem Tov or not, but in the Hebrew it definitely sounds good. Lo Pashut, liot Pashut. It's not simple to be simple. In other words, usually we associate the subject of, of simplicity with being a low level. Someone understands and you're a big professor, and that's something which is special. But a simple person is only a simple person. Then, when we have another perspective, and this perspective is that the simple person is the most important. The greatest level is to be simple. The Baal Shem Tov loved simple people. That was something which is almost unprecedented. Then we understand that whatever Hashem wants of you, you can sing. If Hashem wants us to understand the Torah and the mitzvahs, let's sing, because we understand, we appreciate it. We internalize the meaning. If Hashem wants us to observe the mitzvah because exclusively that's what he wants us to do and for no other reason, then we, we're happy about that too. We may not understand the reason of the mitzvah itself, but the fact itself that we can observe Hashem's mitzvah, that's enough for reason to be happy. So the fact that, in summary at this point, the fact that David the Melech called it Zmirot Hayim Chukecha means that we should always be happy. About what? About observing the mitzvahs of Hashem. Just like it says in the Talmud, in the Megillah, coming up to Purim soon, Kola kore ima, for whoever reads the, the Torah, usually referring to the written Torah, without a pleasant tone. Vishone, or someone that learns the Mishnah or Talmud, below Zimra, same word here, Zimra, Without song, I love a ketuba mayor. The pasuk says something uh, negative about that person. So, in other words, Torah needs to be learned with a song. And thinking about Rabbi Gersh Mendel Gorelik of blessed memory, who in the next half hour I'm going to be participating in his funeral. I remember that when we were in Italy and we. We had a, a camp and a, pro, a summer program learning Torah. And so Rabbi Gersh Mendel was such a great chassid. I remember from the morning till around the afternoon, till around noon, he would sit there. This was in the outskirts of Milano, maybe an hour or an hour and a half. And there was, a, there was like a little forest. And he would sit there and daven for hours and sing songs, chassidic songs. And this is what engraved in me as a young lad as a young bachor, what it means to really daven with song and what it means to connect to Hashem on a very pleasurable level, on a very enjoyable, on a very high supreme level. 
And I, until today, I have this image in my mind. And I used to sit sometimes at the side and just watch him for several minutes. It used to, it really had a great impact on me. And hopefully I can pass this on and share it with all of you that when we daven, it should also be enjoyable, pleasurable singing songs as we like so much to do in our minion at Chabad of Rechavia, especially on Shabbat and the, and the Chagim. As we did this past week on Rosh Chodesh and Bezrat Hashem this coming Shabbat, which is going to be a very special Shabbat, to come and hear the Parashat Zachor, it's a biblical mitzvah, to hear the Parashat Zachor this week, and looking forward to seeing everyone. So let's, so let's go on to the next point. The, the next point is, within the same verse, within the same pasuk. so if we've painted such a positive picture about David HaMelech, what he meant, what he didn't mean, and how there is some very a very positive point in what David HaMelech said, so then why was he punished? It, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like someone that is melamed schut, someone that finds favor with someone else, even if they did something wrong. It, it's, it's, I'll, I'll tell you the example that, that I'm picking up. Um, the story is told by by, uh, by Rabbi Lu, one of the veteran shluchim of the Rebbe in London, England. And so when he got engaged to be married, his, the, the Jaffe family, Mrs. Lu, Rebbe Tzin Lu, is, uh, is from the Jaffe family, and they were very close to the Rebbe's wife, the Rebbe, of course. And they, they would often come and visit the, Rebbe's, the Rebbe Tzin, um, in, in, in the Rebbe's home. And so when... Rabbi Lu, when he became the Chatan, they invited, uh, the Rebetzin invited the family with the Chatan to come over. And she prepared orange juice and they honored the Chatan to pour orange juice. They had glass cups with glass straws or plastic with clear straws. They, he didn't, they honored the Chatan to pour, the, to pour everyone the orange juice. And so when he poured, he didn't notice the the, the the straw which pushed over the cup, which spilled the, the orange juice on the table in the Rebbe's home in front of the Rebbe. He was obviously very embarrassed, but almost, almost in an in instinct, as the, the, as the cup was turning over, before it even uh, spilled, the Rebbe started saying, wow, Mazel Tov, it's a special sign of over, of, of, uh, of of an overpour of a blessing. And so Rabbi Lu, when he told us the story, he said, she looked so happy and positive that I wanted to pour over the next cup too. So sometimes when you take a, an embarrassing moment or, or, or a shameful moment or, or something negative and you turn it into positive and you give it a positive touch, then, then it's almost like, so you didn't do anything wrong. So let's do it. Let's do it again. Now, obviously, we don't mean that literally, but it's just to bring the point across. So, if we say, getting back to our subject, that David Melach did something positive by saying Zemiro Kariyatlo, so why was he punished? It seems to be so obvious that he did something good. So why was he punished with such a severe punishment that they, they made a, he made a mistake? And the Arona Kodesh was carried on the wagon instead of being carried on the shoulder. And then Uzzah had to touch the Aron by mistake that it shouldn't tip. And then he passed away. So what was it that David HaMelech missed? And the explanation is as follows. That King David knew That one moment, please. Okay. David Amelech knew that the Torah has different, different compliments, different praises. You can praise the Torah with an external thing, so to speak. That 
all of the details of the world, of this, of all the, the, the entire globe, are dependent on even one small iota of, of, of the Torah. And he also knew that the Torah can be praised with something much, much deeper. So what do we say? We say that really he should have complimented the Torah with, with a greater level, with a greater compliment, and he should not have mentioned this quote-unquote external, uh, minor, so to speak, relatively speaking, compliment. David HaMelech really knew. He did, he was aware of, of the greater level. The only thing is, is that he was at the time in a very dire situation. And we have a rule that Ein hadinim nimtakin elo b'shoshan. If there is, God forbid, a stern, a, a severe situation, the best way to sweeten, the best way to, to dilute the, 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 the difficult situation is with going to the source. What's the source? In this case, that he, wa- he wanted to lezamer aritzim. Remember we talked about yesterday that one of the interpretations of zmirot is to cut, to cut away the bad. So one of the ways to cut away the bad is by indicating that the entire world is only, is, depends on only one iota of the Torah. So hopefully, by talking about chukecha, the statutes of the, of, of the, uh, of the, uh, of the Torah, that, has, that we have to sing zmirot, that these statutes are considered as a song for David HaMelech, he was basically elevating himself, connecting himself more to the Torah, and thereby allowing the world, so to speak, to fall, to, 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 not the world, but his problems, to fall to the side. What was his problem? What, was, what did he misunderstand? What should he have done? He should have also complimented the other parts of the Torah, the Eidot, the testimonies, and the Mishpatim. The Mishpatim are the mitzvahs that we understand are logical. In other words, there are two ways to look at the world. You can either, you can either look at the world that the world is part of godliness, part and parcel, or you can look at the world that the world at the world that the world is something separate, something negative, mundane, but Hashem. Hashem is, is Kedusha and Godliness. The same thing is by Torah. The Mishpatim, the mitzvahs that we understand that are logical, those mitzvot are something that we, we can connect to. We being our bodies, our existence in this world. We can connect to it because we understand it. Chukecha, those are the mitzvahs that we don't understand. We accept them. So David the Melech what he should have said was, he should have complimented also those mitzvahs which we understand. Why? Because that would indicate that the world in general is not, God forbid, something separate from godliness. Rather, it's all one. Where is that alluded to? When we say the Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad Echad. We say Hashem is one. So the famous question is, why don't we say Hashem Yachid? He is the only God. That would, in a sense, um, indicate much more how HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty God, is, is, is the only one. There is nothing besides for him. He is he's sing, singled out. He's, there's nothing else in the world. Doesn't that strengthen much more his greatness? And the answer is no. It's special to say Hashem Yachid. Hashem is the only God. No question about that. But Hashem Echad is even more special in a sense. Why? Because Echad is made up of three Hebrew letters. Aleph, Chet, Dalit. Aleph, the numerical value of Aleph is one. The numerical value of Chet is eight, which represents the seven heavens and, and one earth. And the Dalit, uh, um, the numerical value of Dalit is four, which corresponds to the four directions of the universe. 
So what are we saying? That the Aleph, the one, that's Hashem, Alu Foshalalam, the master of the universe, he is the master of the entire world, not only in the spiritual realms and the spirot and the keter, but also he is part of the entire world. The entire world is part of him. In a perfect world, when Mashiach will come, wherever we look at every object, even physical material objects, each object will cry out, will, will call out Hashem's name. I am part of Hashem. I have a, a divine spark within me. Right now, before, in the moments before Mashiach comes, we, it, it's difficult for us to, uh, to, to see the spiritual uh, spark within every, within every um, object. But that doesn't change the fact. Every object has a spark of godliness, like we learned at great length in the, in, in the Tanya of Shari Chud Ve'amunah. And you can look it up in our YouTube channel of Chabad of Rechavia. And you can look up the, the classes in Tanya and, and learn those and, and to listen and follow those classes. So when we talk about Hashem Echad, that indicates Hashem's unity much more than Yachid. Yachid is, he is the only one. Very nice, it's wonderful, it's true, but it's, it, it doesn't express the ultimate compliment for Hashem. When we say Hashem Echad, like it says in the Rashi, in the Parsha of, of Vayetchanan, Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokein Hashem Echad, Hashem, Hashem Elokeinu is now, before Mashiach comes, Hashem Echad, that's when Mashiach comes. Then it's going to be clear how every single object in the world is really godly. So this is what David HaMalach, I'm sure he knew it, but it would have been a much greater compliment to the Torah, to Hashem, to say that we, that the world, the, 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 the materialism of the world, and in David HaMalach's case, his enemies, are there not to counter him, not to cut them away, rather to bring them in the fold, rather to welcome them in. And this is a lesson that you and I can learn and can, can hopefully um, share with the world. And even if it's with one or two more people, that's worth it. That when we encounter worldly matters, whether it's people that act in a secular way, or it's uh, objects, that it's something that we come in, in contact with, scenarios in life that we come in contact with, some of them can be challenging. So we have to remember that the best way to lower the flame of, 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 the, of the counter, of the, of the opposite energy, is by bringing more light, by spreading to, to, the, to, that, to that challenge, to try to, to, to try to embrace it in the sense that to bring Kedusha into that situation. And when we involve the world around us, then we can be more sure, Bezrat Hashem, that we will be doing the right thing in bringing Shalom in the world and bringing light in the world. And let's finish off by saying, Let's hope and pray that we'll be able to sing the 10th song, which is a song that we're going to sing when Mashiach comes, Bezrat Hashem, very, very soon, when it will be Bila Hamavit Onatzach, there will not be any more death in the world. And there will only be revelation, song, and, and uh, happiness forever and ever. As we say, Az Yashir, then we will sing. Let's hope that it should be Bezrat Hashem immediately now, this moment, Amen. Looking forward to seeing you tonight, Bezrat Hashem, for, for our class Tuesday evenings at, at, at 7.30. And that will be our class in connection with Seriously Happy and in connection with Purim because uh, next week is going to be too close to Purim for our class. And then we'll, we'll Bezrat Hashem, we'll, uh, I look forward to seeing you here uh, tomorrow morning and Friday for Kabbalah Cafe. And of course... Uh, Shabbat, Parashat Zachor, Parashat Terumah. Looking forward to seeing all of you. Shalom, shalom. Have a great day. Only good news.